So before I start this video, I just want to address one thing, and that's my voice. Uh, this is what happens when you spend a few days in smog. Uh, here in Delhi, it's just people have been burning their crops. Everyone's saying it's global warming and pollution. No, a bunch of farmers are burning their crops, and the smog has just been awful. And uh, yeah, I sound really weird, and that's why. But anyways... I just attended a meeting about gender and tobacco at the UN Framework for Tobacco Control and the meeting was as exceedingly boring as it sounds. They were talking about sexism in tobacco advertising and as well as government sexism in the warnings they put on packages because apparently the government puts too many aesthetic diseases on women's packages. Just utterly irrelevant stuff. Uh, but what is not irrelevant, obviously, is that women and men do die from smoking tobacco. And we should be trying to help these women get off of cigarettes. Uh, my favorite way, and quite frankly, the best way of doing it is voluntary harm reduction strategies like vaping. Women happen to like vaping because they enjoy products like chocolate vape or apricot flavor. It's a great way to save lives in both genders. Um, You'd think that the FCTC would be all on board with this, but you'd be wrong. They actually actively want to ban the specific flavors that women like. And they say that vaping is a gateway to smoking and that's why. Something that has been proven to be wildly untrue. So I decided to confront them on this. And here is the answer that I got. Oh, is this on? Okay. <laughs> Um, one of the big harm reduction strategies that has worked for women is electronic cigarettes. They're, a lot of the studies from the UK have shown that they can be up to 95% less harmful than regular cigarettes. A lot of the reasons women find them appealing though is because of uh, the better taste, the flavors like apricot and chocolate and causes them to move over to e-cigarettes. Yet right now, um, the framework is discussing banning these flavors that are helping women quit. Uh, do you have any comments on that? necessarily lead to quitting and as a, an advocate for tobacco control I, I am extremely reluctant to get ahead of the science and to say that there is absolute irrefutable proof that when women swap to electronic cigarettes that has a better health outcome for them because I haven't seen enough of the science yet. Around the banning of the flavors, if you're trying, if, as I understand cessation, um, it is possible to quit without trading down to a less harmful product. And as a tobacco control advocate, I can't uh, see myself espousing um, a, a, another form of tobacco as a way of moving from one form of tobacco to another form of tobacco. It just doesn't make it's sense. It's not tobacco. It's not tobacco. It's There's no tobacco. Sorry, I've missed yeah. it. It's nicotine. Why would I want to put nicotine into anybody's body? Uh, we, we don't want to shift to a less harmful product. We want to shift to a product which doesn't have any harm. That doesn't work though. <laughs> Um, so not only did this woman not know that tobacco was not in e-cigarettes, she suggested that using nicotine separate from tobacco was not an option they should pursue. So what is she suggesting? Cold turkey? It sure seems like it, hence why I said that doesn't work at the end, because in 95% of cases, it is utterly useless. If this is truly the position of the people making legislation in the FCTC, then they are going to kill people. Because 
nicotine therapy is more successful of a quitting mechanism than any other measure. And the American Journal of Preventative Medicine have revealed that 31% of the people that they tested with e-cigs were still not smoking after six months, including long-term smokers who had unsuccessfully quit before. So despite the main panelist I was speaking with, Patricia Ann Lambert, being part of multiple international anti-tobacco organizations and having worked at the Ministry of Health for the South African government, she didn't seem to have any idea what she was talking about, which made her pretty mad, evidently. Just listen to what she had to say after my question. I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Um, the gentleman who came in with the black bag and the woman who uh, is beside you, I wonder if you would mind identifying yourself either as a member of civil society or as a party? Um, I'm media. I was under the impression that the media was not present at these meetings? We're allowed at these side meetings. I beg your pardon? We're allowed. We're not allowed at the larger event. We're allowed in these side rooms, though. They're allowed here. Yes. They're allowed here. Thank you for the They're clarification. Here. Yeah. They're allowed here. Needless to say, she was exposed for not knowing what she was talking about, and she was pretty embarrassed about it. Like Patricia, the politicians and lobbyists speaking at this conference and forming legislation are not experts. They're bureaucrats toying with people's lives for their own self-interests, which is exactly why they banned media from the main conference, wouldn't allow camera into these side panels, and why they wanted me gone for asking tough questions. We were followed by security for the rest of that day until we left. If, you, if your ideas are good, you want the world to hear them and you want people to challenge them because you know your argument will win. This is not the case here because these people don't have good ideas. They have agendas and it's going to kill people. If you wanna see more videos about our trip to India, then please subscribe to the Rebel Media by hitting the button below.